morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to all who are joining us online and praying with us this morning and this day. Just take a moment just to um, get our hearts ready for this greatest of all gifts of God's love that we come to so often and uh, so easily in many ways, but yet never lightly, always with a great sense of tremendous awe and thanksgiving. Let us sing to the Lord, for he has gloriously triumphed. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let us open up our hearts with deep appreciation, a tremendous willingness to welcome the Lord and share the Lord with others and with contrite hearts as we put ourselves before the mercy of our God. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when by your gift we have known it more fully so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling firm, more firm, firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jer Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah, the prophet, and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was a scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? about himself or about someone else. Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, there is water. What is to prevent us? What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop 
and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continuing on his, on his way rejoicing. Philip, Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let, Let all, all the earth, earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, you peoples, loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls. He has not let our feet slip. Let all, let all the, the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now all you who fear God, which I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all, let the, all the earth, earth cry out to God with joy. joy. Blessed be God who refused me not, my prayer or his kindness. Let all, the, Let all earth the earth cry out to God with joy. Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, Except the one who is from God, he has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. I know we all have in our lives a number of things that are very important to us. Our priorities, the things that we feel really matter. I think that's okay, there can be many. And if we're really honest with ourselves, they're, they're not always of the same order of importance. And quite honestly, some that we get real excited and passionate about are here today and gone tomorrow. Others have various degrees of importance in our lives and we dedicate ourselves to those things in various different ways and uh, some will have lasting value, certainly family values and integrity of life, etc. What Jesus is reminding us is uh, something that you know very well is that is the bread of life, the person who eats his body will live forever. Um, 
I guess everybody can interpret that their own way, but I think what we're saying, I know that's what you're saying, it's what I'm saying too, is that what could be more important? What could be a higher value, a higher priority than the Eucharist and to share in that? And I know you believe that. Your life gives evidence of that. But I also think that for us who do come to Mass so often and regularly and understand it to the degree that we're able, nobody understands it fully, it's always a good idea to reflect on how we show that. Certainly, priorities are shown by what we're willing to invest in it by way of effort or whatever it takes. Different things take different things. And some things I know we come to a point where we say, well, that's just not worth it or it's not convenient or it's too hard or it costs too much or, or I really don't need it that badly or whatever it might be. And other things are, I'm going to do everything I can to make that central in my life, which is what I think we do. Um, and the other side of the coin is then sharing in that, making that our priority. How does my life reflect that even now? What evidence do I give that that is my highest priority? Like all things, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to really show it. Now, again, I'm saying this knowing that you show it, believe it. I know that. I'm not trying to question that at all. And the witness that you give by coming on a Thursday morning this early, celebrating the Eucharist so regularly, is amazing. But nevertheless, I think perhaps challenges us to look even deeper that we never take this for granted, that we're willing to continue growing in our not only our understanding, but also in what we bring to the Lord. How we never see this as a, a part of our day, or just a, another part of our routine, I should say, but rather as the very center and ultimate part of our day in our lives. And then perhaps, how is it affecting me? How is it helping me to become what I receive and to really show the Lord uh, my appreciation by the manner of my life, my life living as Christ uh, showed, showed us and called us to. So, I mean, honestly, I know it takes effort to get up in the morning and get here, et cetera, et cetera, but it's really not that big of a deal. We do that in a lot of different ways. But to really live the Eucharist is not meant to be easy or routine. It's meant to be the greatest challenge of our lives because, it's, because it is truly the ultimate gift of our lives. So maybe these Gospels on the bread of life are just good ways for us to just make sure that we really keep the Eucharist always as the center of our lives. So let us come humbly and gratefully to the Lord and pray for our needs and the needs of our, of our sisters and brothers. We pray for our world, for unity, for justice and equality, and for true and lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for the church during this Easter season especially. We pray for the Universal Church, for our Holy Father, and uh, for all the leaders of the church. We pray for our diocesan church and our bishop. We pray for our parish community and for one another. And we pray for the church that is our family at home, that Christ, especially Christ in the Eucharist, will always be the center of all that we do. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick or suffering, broken, bereaved, lost. The special intentions that each of us have promised our prayers for, for others and for those that we may have forgotten and those that we, many, many, that we are unaware of, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all of our children, our young adults and children with special needs, that God would bless and protect them and help them to grow in his love 
we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died, all our own family members and friends and parishioners. We pray for Larry Martis and for his family. We pray in a special way today for Tom Smuts and his family. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, we believe with all our hearts that you are the bread of life. We come to you with tremendous humility and gratitude as we share in this great sacrament of eternal life. Help us to appreciate more and more each day and to live more deeply each day this great love that you share with us. We ask all these things now through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all who serve your church. Remember, Tom Smuds, and all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. From our hearts, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter onto my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body
body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Christ died for all. 
that those who live may no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks, everyone, for sharing in the celebration today, but thank you especially for the great witness that you give of making Christ, especially Christ in the Eucharist, so important and so central in your life. And may you continue to feel the great blessings that this Eucharist continues to give us, and including that hope one day of eternal life. So let's go in peace now, glorifying God by our lives.